Professor Jackie Smith from the University of Pittsburgh suggests some alternatives to hierarchy and capitalism. Here is Jackie. I think a good place to start uh, this conversation is, is with the moment, the political moment that we're in. Uh, Lauren laid out a little bit of the, the, the crisis element, which I think is really important for understanding the possibilities uh, for protests to have an impact, as well as the, the kinds of uh, challenges and the urgency that there is some movement for change. Um, another element of this moment, though, uh, which I, I develop in, in my book that just came out, um, is that we're, this political moment is one where popular groups have more capacity to mobilize across borders than at any other time in history. Um, so we have a very rich foundation upon which to build a, a movement that can transcend national states. And I think that's important because if we're fighting a globalized system of capitalism, we need a globalized movement. Um, and the, the kind of promising thing is that we do have a lot of organizations, networks, lessons, and ideas that have been developing over the past few decades to build on. So that's part of the moment. Uh, this moment is one where we could probably call it uh, a moment of, of world revolution. Um, so there's connections between uh, the Arab Spring uh, protests in Europe and what's going on in the United States now. This world revolution needs to be about articulating a new emancipatory project that can counter uh, what um, Phil McMichael calls the globalization project, which was a very systematic uh, program of policies that have been implemented, implemented since the 1970s um, to advance uh, the interests of the transnational capitalist class of globalized capitalism. Um, so I think this thinking of our struggle in terms of an emancipatory project can be a, a fruitful way to help focus attention and really articulate what Occupy needs to be about and how it can connect to all these struggles in different parts of the world. This emancipatory project needs a few things, and, and uh, we need to develop a shared vision or a path of how or what direction we want to move together, not necessarily that end goal or that utopia of where we want to be in the end, but, but a, a vision of how to move forward. Um, and there also needs to be a, a sense of a common, a shared identity. Um, Lauren referred to identity as an important dimension of movement, and I think that's something that... Uh, that good leadership in this movement, not of no leaders, but of decentralized leadership, leadership will help uh, activist groups articulate these identities and, and build new ones from what's existing in, in the system that we have, which is a set of identities that are hierarchical, exclusive, um, and usually promoting disunity rather than the unity that we need. So, so we need new kinds of identities that can foster unity amid diversity. Um, there's three general tasks that I think um, the movement needs to develop, and we can see these really uh, being articulated in the global justice movement, um, and, um, and I'd like to think about how they apply then to the, the Occupy uh, struggle today and how we connect this past movement of global justice or existing movement of global justice with this moment of new activism around Occupy. Um, so the three basic tasks, um, one is rolling back and resisting neoliberal globalization. So along the lines Walden Bellow has argued, the Seattle protests and the, the protests against the World Bank um, that followed and the G8 conference conferences as well are the other example of this strand of resisting and trying to roll, in, roll back uh, neoliberal globalization. So the second uh, strand of, or, or thread of activism really reflects um, movements that are, that are articulating alternatives, both articulating and um, exemplifying or creating models and possibilities for um, carrying out alternatives to economic globalization. Um, indigenous ideas and language and movements have been really important in the global justice movement. So the Zapatista Encuentros, uh, which began in the 90s, 
were a really important kind of foundation for the global justice movement. More recently, in 2010, the Cochabamba Conference on Climate Change, which was hosted uh, by Bolivia, Evo Morales, uh, has generated some really important ideas that are getting some good play in activist discourses today and even making their way into official discourses. Um, ideas about the rights, getting a charter on the rights of Mother Earth as part of international law. There's been some important inroads there, um, but also getting activists to kind of focus on these kinds of ideas as goals. Um, and the idea of buen vivir as an alternative, good, good living, as an alternative to economic growth as um, measures of progress and, and focal points for policy. There's a notion of autonomy that's not really about individual autonomy, but, um, but about collective autonomy that involves some responsibility to a collective. And any of you who are working with local occupies might be frustrated with some of the libertarian anarchists among our rank. Um, and I think that's an important idea that we can take from indigenous struggles. Um, the decentralizing tendency in the social forum, I think, is also really important uh, because one of the challenges we have is if we're fighting a global system, we have to think about and in many ways operate on a global scale, but we also have to connect to where people are at and help them see how these threads are connected. So um, the decentralizing, uh, the way that social forums have created national, regional, and local social forums have been a way to help connect conversations globally and over time and bridge that gap between local and global. Um, I think another thing that's emerging in my observations of the social forums is that there are actually some new kinds of identities that are emerging as people who are active in them and the, the activists in the US are realizing more and more that we, the, all the identities we're very familiar with, nation, class, race, gender, all come out of this system of capitalism. They're all related um, to a system that we're, uh, we take for granted. So if we're trying to change the system, these very identities um, might be where we need to start. If we have these hierarchies in our own relationships within our movement, um, we need to undo those hierarchies if we're going to move forward to challenge the hierarchies on a larger scale. So um, transformation of identities um, are really important. Jackie Smith talks about collective autonomy and decentralization of political power. After resisting the neoliberal agenda, she says the second step is to clearly articulate alternatives. And for us, not political representatives, but for us, the citizens, is to create modules to replace the current political system. For example, neopolin.ca. Carol Davidson also talks about decentralized political power, which to me is precisely Perpetual Direct Democracy, a booklet published by Amazon.com. You can also read it on pacific.ca. The hope of Professor Lauren Langman is that the utopian vision of direct democracy will be established in our lifetime.